The civil rights movement and the new left inspired other marginalized groups to create their own social movements. For women, the right to vote hadn't really translated to any kind of political power for them. And largely after, the, after World War II, women are confined to the home. And this really starts to change after Betty Friedan publishes The Feminine Mystique, uh, where she compares the home to a comfortable concentration camp. Um, in 1963, you see the results of the, the women's movement with the Equal Pay Act. And in 1966, the National Organization for Women was created and named Betty Friedan as their president. Within the National Organization of Women, they demanded equal opportunities like jobs, education, and political participation. Now really grew out of a resurgence of middle-class feminine, but many realized as they got involved that they were encountering some inequality and sexual exploitation within the movement because now was really just for middle class women and that's only a small segment of women. So new feminism burst onto the scene in 1968 at the Miss America pageant. Outside of the Miss America pageant in 1968, uh, women who were protesting filled garbage cans that were labeled freedom trash can with objects of oppression, things like bras and girdles, and introduced the terms sexism and sexual politics in expanding our idea of personal freedom. One of the biggest surprises um, out of these marginalized groups was the gay liberation movement. Now, in the 1950s, there was the Mattachine Society um, that worked on kind of combating stigma in society. It kind of comes out of the Lavender Scare, which was a portion of the Red Scare where um, gays and lesbians within the government were being targeted. And the Mattachine Society worked to persuade the public that they were normal people, but the moment that really sparked the gay liberation movement happened in 1969 during a police raid on the Stonewall Inn, which was a gay bar in New York City. And rather than them giving in to police harassment, which they had done, you know, for many years before, they would like give in to it, pay fines, whatever. Um, this time they decided to fight back. And as a result of that, there was five days of rioting that followed. Um, you see as a part of the gay liberation movement many people coming out of the closet to express their identity and within a few years holding gay pride marches in many cities in the United States. There was also new militancy in the Mexican-American rights movement where they emphasized pride, really similar to those ideas of black power, and closely linked that pride to labor struggles. In 1965, Cesar Chavez led nonviolent protests and boycotts of California grape growers to pressure those grape growers to agree to labor contracts through the United Farm Workers, which was a union. This drew national attention to their low wages and oppressive conditions that they were working under. And in 1970, they were successful and got the growers to agree to allow them to join that union. The 1960s also saw an upsurge in Native American militancy that was a direct reaction to the dismantling of the reservation system um, and termination and trying to get Native Americans to integrate into the mainstream, things like pushing children out into um, those boarding schools. And so as a result of this new Native American militancy, you see demands for self-determination. The National Indian Youth Council President Clyde Warrior spoke out about the lack of freedom and autonomy that Native Americans faced. In 1968, the American Indian Movement protested demanding more tribal self-government and restoration of their treaty rights. And in 1969, a group of Native Americans occupied Alcatraz, and that occupation lasted until 1971 when they launched the Red Power Movement, which again was very similar to the Black Power Movement, where it was focused on a pride um, in identifying as Native American. Another area of protest was in environmentalism that looked at different parts of American life. Um, environmentalism was more activist and youth oriented than any other earlier conservation efforts. And really what they focused on was people's quality of life. 
And really what spurs the environmentalist movement of the 1960s and 70s is a book um, written by Rachel Carson called Silent Spring. And that was that was published in 1962 and where she talked about the effects of DDT, which was a chemical that was sprayed in um, neighborhoods all around the United States to kill bugs, specifically uh, mosquitoes, but DDT itself was a really dangerous ke chemical that led to people getting cancer. All of these efforts of this new environmentalism movement led to the banning of DDT and later to the passage of the Clean Air and Water Acts and the Endangered Species Act. The rights revolution gained legitimacy through the Supreme Court with Chief Justice Earl Warren. And under Justi Chief Justice Earl Warren's court, it expanded American rights in ways that we really hadn't seen before. And some of the most important cases are listed here. Uh, the NAACP versus Alabama in 1958 struck down laws requiring civil rights organizations to make membership lists public. Loving versus Virginia declared laws against interracial marriage unconstitutional. Um, court decisions under Earl Warren also pushed forward the obligation of states to respect the liberties that are outlined in the Bill of Rights. In the Miranda versus Arizona, um, the Supreme Court ruled that a person must be told their rights if they're taken into police custody. This is known as the Miranda rights. Baker versus Carr um, allowed um, for voting. Our representative districts had to be equal in population. And the Supreme Court under Chief Justice Earl Warren also outlined entirely new rights, which kind of became, as the, became known as the right to privacy. In Griswold versus Connecticut, the Supreme Court overturned a state law that banned contraceptives. And Roe v. Wade created a constitutional right to terminate a pregnancy. 1968 can only be described as a year of turmoil. It was so tumultuous that it seemed like the, the foundations of society itself seemed to be crumbling. In the Vietnam War, we had the Tet Offensive, where the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese launched attacks throughout South Vietnam. Um, U.S. military uh, was surprised by a lot of these attacks. Um, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, organized a Poor People's March in Memphis to support a garbage collector strike. And while he was in Memphis, he was assassinated. This led to uprisings in cities all across the United States. A student at Columbia University in New York, um, pro uh, Columbia student protest led to a police assault on students who were protesting in New York City. Robert Kennedy, who is John F. Kennedy's brother, was killed by a Pal Palestinian nationalist after a stump speech because he was running for president in 1968. Also um, dealing with the presidential election in 1968, there were many protests outside of the Democratic Convention from anti-war activists, and those anti-war activists were met by police assault. And the, you know, the turmoil was not just limited to the United States. There was global turmoil as well. Um, the, the events of this year lead to a conservative backlash and demands for public order because it seems like the entire fabric of society is falling apart and ripping, being ripped to shreds. Richard Nixon um, in 1968 runs for president um, as a Republican. He wins the Republican nomination and campaigned as a champion of the silent majority. This was a term that he coined that basically referred to ordinary Americans who believed that the changes of the 1960s had gone too far and that he had a renewed commitment to law and order and he won this election despite a third party um, of George Wallace running as a segregationist. The 1960s transformed American life in unimaginable ways. There were new rights being uh, provided, new understandings of freedom, but it also left a number of unsolved problems and a sense of public confidence in national leaders 
being undermined. And a lot of those issues are going to come to a head in President Nixon's, in Richard Nixon's presidency.